Hello everybody, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. In today's video, we are going to be building and flying the Yenese. Yenese? Yenese? Yen uh, the new Russian thing that's uh, currently being built. Uh, so, yeah, I actually didn't even know about this thing until I, uh, until I stumbled across and I was like, hey, let's do a video on this thing. So, um, uh, yeah, the uh, Yenese, whatever I'm going to call it, probably completely pronounced wrong, is um, a super heavy lift rocket currently being developed uh, in Russia. Um, if you don't know, a super heavy lift launch vehicle is anything that is capable of carrying over 100 tons into a low Earth orbit, and this thing can carry just over 100 tons and about 20 tons into a translunar injection, which is what we're going to be doing today. Um, so yeah, this thing is currently under development. It is a scheduled for a first flight uh, at either late 2027 or early 2028. So this thing's still a while out, but uh, you know, Russia, they don't want to fall behind. You know, America's building like SLS and Starship and China's building the new Long March rocket. They're all giant things and they're all going to be massive. And Russia needs to get in on the super heavy lift launch vehicle. Uh, get in on the action so that is that is the it's that's a, this is one and actually i just saw <laughs> literally a week ago um development of the rocket was frozen um, i don't know why like, it was suspended so hopefully it's still gonna happen you know hopefully they didn't already give up they've only been working on this for a few years um they're supposed to have the design officially finalized in 2020 by the end of 2021 so they're gonna start they've actually started constructing a few different parts of it like just little random like doodad things but uh you know let's hope because this thing is this thing is really cool and what are we gonna be doing with it today um i'm not even talking about the design of this thing so i'll talk about quickly what we're gonna do with it and then i'm gonna talk about the kind of the design of the, the vehicle so um, the, uh, the rocket ha uh, has, uh, is capable of, like I said, bringing 20 tons to translunar injection. So we're going to be doing two launches today. Uh, the first launch, uh, this is actually a mission that uh, has been theorized to be a thing that is done with this, uh, with this rocket that may, may be a mission that they do, which actually we're going to start building right now, and that is a lunar lander and return mission. It's like an Apollo-style mission. So the way this thing it works is we're going to, uh, get into a low earth orbit with this stage uh, with a you know with the rocket and there's going to be a third stage so the rocket like i said the design is not totally finalized so the uh the stage configuration isn't totally you know hammered out what kind of the different variations of the things are um so at least the, what i'm going to be doing which i think is maybe what they would do uh z rocket is a three kind of four stage vehicle so it has a uh, the bottom uh, core stage with uh, six boosters uh, wrapped around it and then once those are all staged away there is an upper stage and then there is an upper upper stage which is a little small kind of stage uh, with a uh, rd uh, 58m engine um uh, there are two of them, and uh, what it does is it basically it'd be a translunar injection stage. It'd be, it would take us out to the the moon. So what I'm going to be doing is going to do again two launches. So the first launch is going to be with the lander, and then the second uh, launch is going to be the uh, the command module. So um. So uh, yeah, that was kind of a weird swallow right there, but <laughs> um. So uh, wow, I've said so so many times. So um, <laughs> uh, there we go. We just finished up the lander. We're going to go integrate it into the vehicle right now. Uh, the, uh, the, yeah, so the lander, and then we're gonna launch the, uh, command module, and we're gonna be launching the command module, actually, um, without the, t uh, the upper stage, that third stage, we're not gonna have it on the vehicle, um, so we're just gonna have the bottom, t uh, stages and then the boosters to get the thing into an orbit, uh, because what's gonna happen is the command module is going to rendezvous in a low Earth orbit with the, uh, with the lander, and then they're gonna use the, that, uh, third stage to go to a translunar injection, and then that is, uh, and then they're gonna go out to the moon, moon and then do a landing and stuff, so, yeah. So that's a theorized mission that actually may happen. Hopefully it'd be a cool mission to have, although I just saw, um, on Twitter today that, uh, or someone on my Discord, uh, sh showed uh, me a tweet where, uh, it looks like China and Russia have agreed to collaborate on the building, of the, the, the construction of a moon base, so that's pretty cool. I don't know what rocket they'd use, like, you'd use the Long March, and then, uh, you'd probably have to use this thing, or, like, an anger at five um you know kind of not good if this thing's frozen right you know not being developed right now but let's hope okay, good. hopefully get that worked out so now we're making the command module which is the pvk the uh P PTK, that's the one, and then we're going to be integrating that onto the second launch vehicle as well. You know, speaking of my Discord, by the way, you should go join the Discord plug time. OMG, we like plugs, so, you know, if you're enjoying the video, hit a nice subscribe button, you know, you can join the Discord, you can s obliterate, you know, the like button, the notification bell, the comment section, you know, right? That's what you're supposed to say as a YouTuber. Um, I don't know if I even consider it, I have like, you know, 4,000 subs, I don't know, is that a lot? I don't know. Um, well, I mean, I 
it all depends on your relative scale. Um, <laughs> so, uh, plugs aside, we have now finished basically the command module and are now integrating it onto the, the uh, launch vehicle. Probably want to launch escape tower, even though this is Russia, so they probably don't even need them. You just, you know, if there's something going wrong, you just jump out. <laughs> That's probably what you do in Russia. So, uh, once that fairing is done, then we can go ahead and crossfade over to the very first launch, uh, which is going to be the lander. So, we're going to go ahead and crossfade. There we go. And we're going to be launching from the Woomerang launch site because this rocket, as you could probably tell, is a little bit overbuilt. I had to drain actually quite a bit of fuel from it. Um, actually, t you know, t just so this thing wasn't literally an SSTO. And it actually get off the ground because it does not have enough thrust to get off the ground um, with fully fueled, you know. Uh, scale is weird, man. So, okay, we're, we're going now. Uh, in the air, and yeah, we're launching from the Moonring launch site just so we can actually basically spend fuel. We kind of, you kind of need, you kind of need to drain fuel, especially the second launch because it doesn't have that uh, that third stage. It is pretty, pretty light. So here we are, uh, just pitching over, throttling down for max Q as we cross around the uh, 10 kilometer mark, at which we will begin to throttle back up. We get kind of get a fair few G's. Um, and actually too bad. They get they get they're kind of bad on the um, the command module launch. It's kind of ironic with the one with the crew in it, but oh well. There we go. That's kind of a cool shot with the clouds down there and the mountains and stuff. You know, and I never don't launch out of here enough. No place. But uh, there go the boosters, kind of exploding as they detach, uh, Russian style. And then, uh, yeah, we're just gonna get our way into an orbit as we deplete that core stage. And now we can stage it away and light up that second stage, which is powered by a singular RD-180 engine. Um, well. It's a two-chamber engine, so that's why I have two engines there, because, you know, with the chambers, there's, there's, there's two of them. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Um, so, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, getting ourselves into an orbit. This stage will get us, like I said, all the way into orbit, and then the third stage will get us out to uh, out to translunar injection as we continue to power our way uh, just almost above the carbon line, in which case, at which point the fairing will be popped open. There it goes. And uh, yeah, now we're just gonna get the last few hundred meters a second. And this is always cool when you can get into orbit in just one big burn without having to like, um, set your apple apps and then cut and then coast back up to apple apps and then re relight the engine. This one, we're just, just going straight into orbit. It's kind of how they do it real, in real life, well, mostly, um, you know. It depends on the mission, obviously, but uh, here we are, almost in orbit. Really satisfying to do these missions. And three, two, almost. They're kind of going sideways, and because they're trying to get as equatorial as possible. And they go, cut! Welcome to orbit. So we can go ahead and cut away that stage. And now we have that third stage, and that is us in orbit. And now we're going to cross the fade over to the second launch. And here we are, throttling up the engines with the crew on board, and we're away! You know, if you think about it, I don't know why there would be a crew at this launch site. There is literally no way to, like, get to it. They have to, like, trek across the frozen tundras of, I guess, the Kerbin equivalent to Siberia, which is in Russia! So, I don't know, I can make more jokes about Russians in this thing than I don't know. I feel like you've had enough Russian, Russian jokes, you know? Can't, well, you can't ever have enough Russian jokes. Ruskies. So, here we go. Through 10 kilometers now, getting ready to separate those side boosters in any second now. They actually burn for quite a while, almost two minutes. And then they are going to get ready to go in three, two, one. There we go. Cut off and separation. Now the core stage is going, pulling over two Gs with that core stage as it uh, gets ready to stage away. And there is Miko stage separation and engine startup as it is getting into orbit. We can get rid of the launch escape system and bearing. And uh, yeah, now we're just going to be flying on up into orbit in this stage. We'll, we won't be able to circularize with this stage. Well, we will, but we won't be able to do like the singular continuous bird just because we have a lot of thrust to weight ratio on this thing. And it goes, it gets going, it gets going pretty speedily. So here we are. And because of the way the planet's were oriented and, or the planet, they're, you know, only the one. Um, we're not quite, it's going to be kind of a janky dock, not janky docking, but a very expensive docking. We're doing it like the most inefficient way possible where I'm just like brute forcing it, but that's what happens when you have a very light payload on it's a super giant rocket. Um, you can do crazy, ridiculous, stupid stuff like this, where you pull like 
you know, like almost a thousand meters a second to do the docking, which is, you know, what we do. It is a lot of Delta V spent on, it's, it's closer to like 850, but you know, for a dramatic, dramatic effect, I don't know, is that almost a thousand? I don't know, kind of almost a thousand. Um, so there we go, that is a lot of inclination change. You can see it's basically just an inclination change we have to do. You can see the planet below us, you can, oh, you can kind of visually see us kind of changing our direction, sort of, but uh, there goes the craft as we fly by at, fly by, fly by at a quarter of a kilometer a second, so a lot of speed there. And then we can just uh, get 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 the rendezvous done and get docked up with, and we still have a ton of Delta V left in that second stage, yeah. We, we did not use the full potential of the rocket in this, uh, in this launch, so there you go, detaching the command module, and then you can, uh, get the lander and stuff all set up for do a nice good old lounge lazy method of docking the superior docking method uh, who cares it was invented by a brit you know well i guess matt said he didn't invent it but you know yeah if he popularized it at least you know some credit um but the russians will i don't know they'll, they'll oblige and use some inferior um, well, British technology. Um, and now we're just gonna go ahead and set up. Uh, so many Russian jokes, right? Um, and now we're gonna go ahead and set up. Although they are cloning, they are making like a, a Falcon 9 clone. I always forget what that rocket is called. It's called the. I'm not gonna remember. I don't know. So much pressure. So much pressure. So here we are getting ourselves oriented towards the maneuver node, and I'm gonna fire up the engine to get ourselves on a translunar injection. Very, very long. Long burn, but uh, hey, you know, that's what happens when you don't have a high TWR, you end up burning for a long time. So, I've um, not really been talking about the lander design. It's like an Apollo design, it's a two stage lander. Um, so, it you know, it lands at the, the landing stage and then it takes off at the the ascent stage or the takeoff, it, it ascends with the ascent stage. There you go. So, um, we're gonna be making an inclination change around the Mun, kind of inefficient, um, but I just kind of want to. Um, get into land on the equatorial side of the month just because it's easier for it, it's easier to get back and just in general just in general, much easier to work with so um, there we go and we can you know we got to use some of that delta v um so we're just going to use the last little bit of the delta v in this third stage and then we're going to stage it away and then we're going to use the command module to uh, circularize us around the month so there goes the third stage now it is time for the command module to uh, get to fire up its engine and do its first of two burns is going to be circularizing us around Z1 and welcome to orbit yay made it all right so now it's time to transfer some crew over to the lander and then we can detach the lander and we can get ready to deorbit and land on Z1 yay fun times we like landing on the Mun Mun's a cool place to land so here you go this landing is actually kind of ridiculous so I don't know, I probably should have teased that in the beginning of the video, you know, viewer attention and crap, but uh, here we are coming in um, very much towards the mountain, because I started that burn a little bit too late, so we're going to do the good old, uh, we're going to do the good old, maybe I do it uh, any day now, there we go, the radial out trick to, you know, not crash into a mountain, and me being the genius that I was, or am, you know, I'm always a genius, you know, um, decide, I can, hey, I can land, but yeah, nope, that mountain is showing up, we got to do the good old radial out thing again, and oh no, are we going to hit, oh, that ah, probably wasn't important. We don't need that fuel tank, so we'll we'll just we'll just continue on like everything's normal. Um, yeah, strategic staging. That's what it was. It was a weight saving maneuver, obviously, totally intentional thing. Definitely not missing a landing leg, and uh, definitely not like completely smashed off an entire fuel tank. That didn't happen, and that was a garbage landing. Um, but hey, we made it. Ah, they're from oh my gosh, more Russian jokes. I didn't realize how many. Russian opportunity. I mean, look, this is like the most absurd. <laughs> this would fit right in with the N1. This was launched on an N1. This would totally work. This would make total sense. And now that lander looks like a bird and it looks like it's looking at me like, oh, what? I'm sorry. I hurt you. Uh, anyway, we can EVA the Kerbal and we can go ahead and plant our flag and get ready to do our uh, return mission because not much to do on the Mun. Mun's kind of lame. I don't know. I just talked about how cool the Mun is, but. Um, and there goes a the flag falling over. I think that was fixed in like 1.11.1 or 0.2 or whatever the newest version is um, as of recording, but I haven't downloaded it yet. So who knows? I mean, I could check the patch notes. I don't know why I haven't downloaded it. Maybe I'll download it after this, I finish filming, um, which is about to happen. But oh no, it's time to do a rendezvous. I don't know why I said, oh no, it's kind of been, this is a normal thing to do. We kind of kind of want to be rendezvousing, but uh, and get the thing in a good place. And then we can get ready to uh, get ready to fire up our upper stage. There we 
There we go. We are up. That thing looks really stupid. <laughs> but hey. Yeah, it really looks like it's dead. I don't know what that looks like. It's stupid, you know? Stupid, yeah. I No way this is what the real thing is. Like, this isn't like a great recreation, but it might have been passable. You know, passable. It's kind of hard to recreate this. Cause the lander is very square shaped, and there's a lot of, not really a lot of square parts in the case. But they're all very round. Now, it's Russian, though. You'd assume that it would be like circles. Like, you know, Russia, you know, the Soviet Union loves circles. Um, but apparently, the, 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 apparently they're into squares now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so now I can go ahead and get our um, maneuver node set up to do our Ron Desenvuis with our command module and get ourselves back to Kerbin. So here we are getting ready to rendezvous and retrograde. And here we go. I'm going to do another Lown Razy method of docking. It's kind of a cool shot with Kerbin in the background there. Going to get ourselves flipped the right way and then just slowly move ourselves towards. Uh, the lander and that uh, can get Kerbals can get reunited and it's gonna be it's gonna be a jolly old time as they come to together. All right, epic. Now we can go ahead and transfer the crew and then get rid of the lander and head back to Kerbin. And at this point, my maneuver node making ability kind of broke. I actually broke a few minutes earlier, but uh, you know we don't really need maneuver nodes. It's pretty easy to get back. You know, maneuver, maneuver nodes are for plebs. That's a Western. Propaganda American here in Superior Russia. More Russian jokes, I know, right? <laughs> so many Russian jokes. But either way, we have made it. I think that's I don't think there are any more Russian joke opportunity. Oh no, there's another Russian joke opportunity coming in here. Uh yeah, because we popped the parachute literally at the last second, you know? All this time, you know, you know, all the time Oh, uh, you know, they've spent parachuting down, like, oh my gosh, why would you guys spend like ten minutes parachuting down? It's ten minutes you couldn't have been drinking vodka, right? I mean, stereotypes, man. Pretty nuts. So, <laughs> here we go. Pop the shoot kind of last second. So, they're only gliding down for like 15 seconds and then literally hit the ground pretty fast. Like, that would hurt in real life. That would, like, really hurt. But, uh, hey, they're Russian. Russian jokes. Russian jokes! And no more jokes because the video's over. Big thanks to all my members. I'll put a picture on them, uh, all the members. So, if you want to become a member, you know, you could do that. But uh, that's going to be it for me. Like, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please rate or comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.